Thank you for tuning in to This Automation Life, brought to you by Brenner Fiedler. I'm your host, Paul Oppenheim. Each week, we discuss technologies used in automation, and this week, just to kind of shake things up, Jeremy Schubert, our automation specialist who typically hosts our show, will be my uh, guest speaker today. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for joining us. And, thank uh, you for having me, Paul. Excellent, you bet. And uh, this week's topic, we're going to be talking about stepper motors and servo motors. So, um, Jeremy... Um, just kind of jumping in here, um, I've, I've heard, and for, for a lot of us out there, I mean, we're familiar with motors, we kind of have an idea what they do, uh, and we're probably familiar, I guess, with some typical, you know, motors, we think of maybe like AC motors, DC motors, uh, stepper motors, and servo, motor, the, uh, servo motors, uh, maybe we're just, for, for those of us who aren't kind of familiar with it, can you give us kind of like a rundown of, of each type and what they do? Or? Of okay. course. Great, okay. So... The biggest difference between stepper and servo motors uh, is that with a servo motor, it's closed loop. Uh, and what that means is, is basically the position of the shaft of the motor, and therefore whatever it's connected to, it's closed loop. You get verification that it's moved, and it actually, not just verification, but it moves to that point um, with like a given profile, a motion profile. With a stepper, it's open loop. You can pulse it to move to a specific position, uh, you can add an encoder to verify that it made it to that position, but it's, um, I guess, a stepper is more like algebra, where a servo is like calculus. Okay. Uh, now, so. I, well, I'm a bit confused, though, when you mentioned closed loop with a servo. Now, you mentioned with a stepper, you can, you can use an encoder to kind of tell where it goes. So doesn't that sort of close the loop, and doesn't that, is that kind of what, because I've always kind of sort of heard that a servo has kind of encoder built in. And if I'm adding an encoder to a stepper, does that not make it closed loop as well? I, I... Well, it's all a matter of what you consider closed loop. I okay, guess. great. So, you know, with any motor, uh, realistically what makes up the motor is a rotor and a stator. You've got a coil and, and either it's an, an induced magnetic field or a permanent magnet. Either way, um, with a servo system, uh, you're, what you're doing is, let's say you're going to move 5,000 points. Okay. When you tell the servo you want to move it to 5,000 points, the encoder doesn't just make sure that it actually moved to that, but it can monitor what's happening as it's moving mm. in order to change torque or speed or whatever. So you can, you can basically uh, get a little more control of the load that way. Okay. Versus with a stepper, you're going to move it basically a number of pulses. Right. And then at the end of that, you can read the encoder and say, okay, did I actually make it that number of pulses, or did I not quite go far enough? Did I go too far? Um, and so let's say, an example, why would, why would this matter? Because it seems like uh, you turn a motor on, you move it to a part, it wouldn't, wouldn't that work? Mm -hmm. um, well, the difference is if you have a, a load that's heavy, a high inertia load, what could happen is it could start to travel, and as the motor starts to slow down, that, that load is actually going to continue moving. Okay. And so with the servo, you would be able to monitor this. You'd see that I'm not putting out much torque, um, that the uh, encoder is, is the, the, t the counts are coming by faster enough so you know the speed, you know much how, how much power the, the motor is putting out. And it's actually going to calculate what it should be doing to fix this right. so that it can make it to the right position at the right time. Um, versus a stepper, if there's too much uh, inertia, it'll just travel past that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, that's the difference between it being closed loop. Interesting. So if I understand this correctly, it sounds like uh, whereas the stepper, let's say I chose, to, like as you say, go 5,000 points, and I say run or whatever the case is, it will think it went 5,000 points, and then at the end of that 5,000 steps, or let's say, it then does a check. And so if you have the encoder, and then you can say, oh, no, you actually didn't go this far, so now you got to correct and, and either you, you overshot it or move back or something. Yeah. Whereas the ser servo, it sounds like it kind of does it on the fly. Right. Okay. And, and so the difference, realistically, the, the brain isn't in the motor. The brain is in the controller. Oh, okay. And so a typical stepper setup is going to be um, a stepper motor connected to a driver and the driver has something like a PLC mm -hmm. that's pulsing it. Okay. So those pulses, each one of those pulses is a step. Right. Um, the difference then with a servo is the servo motor and encoder both feed into a servo controller. 
um, or at least a drive that's that's smart enough to to do this type of thing. Um, and so that's really where the big difference comes in okay. is, is in the controller. The motors don't matter as much. Yeah, you're either right. going to buy a servo motor or a stepper motor, but uh, the difference is a servo controller is doing it realistically is doing calculus on where am I at in my current position and where should I be and what's the change versus a stepper is basically saying go a number of steps whatever your your stepper controller may be outputting that number of steps and then checking to see did I actually move that number of steps. Gotcha. Now. So it sounds like if you were to purchase a servo uh, the smarts are literally in the board uh, as far as constantly doing self correction which is brilliant. Uh, and then with a stepper though if you wanted to kind of try to simulate that it sounds like you'd have to do that step further removed and have the PLC try to do all those calculations for you. It yeah seems. if, if okay. you wanted to waste a lot of your own time right. you could yeah, you okay. could realistically pulse the stepper and then see where was it and if it wasn't in the right place then you could say it went too far then you could pulse it to come back. Gotcha. And then if it overshoots again a little bit then you can pulse it again. Yeah. What sounds, you're going to see yeah. is a Huge delay. It'll take a lot of time to do that. And I mean, right. in a lot of time, we're still talking less than seconds. Right. The other issue is that you really don't have feedback on the amount of torque that you're using to do this. Mm -hmm. You can't control the amount of torque you're doing. Um, realistically, with a stepper motor, you can think of it as uh, kind of like pulsing a heater or something. Right. You're turning it on and off and on and off, and, and it's moving just a little bit each time. Yep. And... And that's it. Versus with a servo, it's it's really a lot of analog things happening at the same time. Sure. So, uh, okay. And, well, gosh. You know, now knowing this, it's like I, I almost think like I never want to even use a stepper. Now that I know the power of a servo, is there ever a reason why I would ever use a stepper over oh, a servo, though? Definitely. So, oh, okay. Um, with a servo system, you know, you've got uh, the servo motor, and it's connected connected to typically a controller, but it can be a, a drive or an amplifier. There's always going to be a controller in the system that is a servo or motion controller right. that's constantly monitoring position and torque and, and adjusting on the fly. Um, because of that, there's, some, there's a, a price you have ah, to pay. Okay. So um, the con to a servo is that, is that it is more expensive. Okay. Some other things, depending on the application, is typically with a, with a servo, when you're in position, um, if you wanted to hold that position... Technically, what is happening is that the servo is, is moving back and forth, maybe an encoder count, one or two. It's called dithering. Okay. And so because of that, the, the motor shaft is actually moving back and forth. And that's right. because you have to energize the motor one way, and you have to instantly kick it back and energize it the other way, so that basically you have both forces just kicking it back and forth in this very specific point. Sure. And that would, that's what would hold a servo load in place. Okay. Um, the other thing is because it is closed loop, there may be times where you want to move in a place and then allow like some manual movement. Mm -hmm. um, rare, rare, but there are applications where you need that. And the servo is actually going to fight you in that case. I see. So you'd have to go and then deactivate the servo, uh, but you know, not a big deal. Okay. With a stepper, you've got um, a lower cost motor itself, uh, just from the manufacturing of a, of a stepper motor. It's, it's inexpensive. Um, Typically, the whole control system is lower cost, and for a lot of a lot of cases, your movement doesn't need to be that accurate. Um, let's say that you're using a stepper motor with a one point degree angle. By the time you take that through uh, the screw of your actuator or whatever your mechanism may be, um, you may be able to be off by twenty degrees okay. even and right. still be accurate enough for the okay. placement of, of your part or your load or whatever. Sure. So uh, being off by twenty stepper counts basically is you know, it, that's easy to do in the stepper world. You know, right, right. Depending on the load of course, but uh, it it all comes down to accuracy and costs. Sure. And and stepper has a, definitely an advantage there. The yeah. other thing, uh, I mentioned holding a load in, in a specific place a stepper motor can actually just be activated on, and it will lock the rotor in place. Okay. Um, it does generate heat while it does that, but it doesn't move. Right. So let's say if you were doing like imaging, for an example, if you wanted to actually move over to something and take a, an image of it, um, like a high accurate, high zoom type of image, um, in the servo it could cause blurry. 
I see, because it's damage. kind of shaking back and forth yeah, a little bit. Yeah, technically, right. physically moving back okay. and forth, and the stepper is so, just so if stopped. You're, so if you're using something, let's say, like a measuring device or something, and yes. you're trying to get something down to, let's say, like submicrons or something like that, yeah. you could actually be working against yourself by using a servo. A stepper would probably be a more well, appropriate... the tough thing there yeah. is then if you're looking at microns, it right. can be tough to actually position a stepper to microns. Wow, so, okay. So it, it, that one's going to be a tough application, sure. but... Right. Um, uh, to which one is the right way, way to go, it, yep. it may be tough. Okay. Um, so the other thing I'd say with a, a stepper, um, you know, it's low cost, it holds loads in place, is that it actually has high torque at low RPM. So okay. your torque to kind of dollar ratio or torque to size of the motor ratio, mm -hmm. it, it may be a little higher on the stepper at low RPMs. Okay. It, it does drop off really quickly as you start to go past five, six, seven, even a thousand RPMs. Mm -hmm. You'll see the torque of the stepper go way down. Okay. Versus the servo, it's pretty constant along uh, the full zero to full speed, which is maybe 1800 or 3600 RPMs on a servo. So, okay. um, so a high speed thing is definitely something you want to use servo. Uh, versus uh, a stepper. Okay, but if it gets, comes to more, let's say, like a high, um, a higher weight or um, something that would weigh a higher weighted load that you're trying to drive, uh, and you want to kick that in fairly quickly, would stepper then be yeah, a little better because of the high torque at the if, start? Um, okay. Yeah, if, like, if okay. quickly is a matter of still within that RPM range, yeah, right. they can accelerate pretty okay. quickly. The problem with accelerating pretty quickly with the stepper, though, to give it another con, I guess, right. okay. is that if when you accelerate quickly, you tend to lose those counts. I see. So that's a... Uh, that because of that kind of inertia right. mismatch happens, like so you will lose yeah, yeah you lose some slippage okay. uh, between the pulses you put in to drive it and mechanically how it how it rotates sure okay so high acceleration is typically another situation where you use servo okay but if you have a, a a heavy load or a high torque load and you just need to move it into an approximate place at a moderate speed we'll call which is right. a, a very I don't know. Not a better way to, to classify that than, than stepper would be sure. the way to go. Excellent. So. Okay. Cool. Well, good. I think that... Uh, I do it. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds right. good. Okay. Cool. Well, you know what? It's that time again. So uh, that's all we have uh, for this week. Uh, Jeremy, I want to thank you again uh, very much for joining thank us. You, Paul. Yep. And uh, thanks to all of you for listening to uh, Brenner Fiedler's This Automation Life. Again, if you have any questions about what you just heard or if you have any topic that you'd like to hear discussed, please don't hesitate to email us at tech, that's T-E-C-H, at B-R-F-A dot com. Be sure to continue tuning in each week. Uh, we'll have more uh, upcoming episodes, and we'll discuss uh, additional uh, automation topics. Thank you again.